Hello, and welcome back. It's been, uh, oof, what, like 20, 20 hours? 23 whole hours since they saw us last. Hours. Yes. So uh, just to address the uh, the old elephant there, um, we had a little bit of a Florida thunder lightning storm outside that knocked out the neighborhood. We're still here, um, and everything is back online and functional again. So we wanted to finish up and give you the part two of the <laughs> firmware episode. This ended up being another one of our classic two-parters. Classic two uh, Not intentionally. Except part one is exactly <laughs> 37 minutes long. Um, lucky for us and for you, uh, we had actually wrapped up the M10 section entirely. We had nothing else to talk about, and we're about to move on to the next topic at hand. So, nice little segue, and we're going to talk about what tonight? Well, we should backtrack just in case anyone yep. had, didn't see True. True. last night's show yep. or is hopping in for the first time. We had intended to do last night's show about all of the new firmware updates mm -hmm. that Leica released on Friday. Yes. And we covered the M10 series of cameras before the power went out. Uh, we still have to cover the Q2, the Q2 Monochrome, the SL2, and the SL2S. Correct. Uh, and quickly, um, just give us another quick synopsis about kind of the the meaning or the significance behind the updates in general and why sure. we need them and... Yeah, just to recap, yeah. and uh, we kind of talked about this last night, but just to go over it again, uh, as I said, back in the days of mechanical film cameras, you know, the camera that you, that you bought and used was the exact same camera from the day you bought it to the day that, you know, you stopped using it or continued to use it. The features were set in stone and that was it. In the age of digital cameras, which is all of these, even the lenses, they are continually updated with firmware, which is basically software that runs on the cameras or lenses. Um, and it introduces new features and improvements. And whether that's performance or user interface or whatever, um, they're, Leica is able to offer you more features, more usability, more performance, whether that's image quality or just speed of use, uh, features that are requested by users, et cetera. You know, a lot of people think that, oh, a firmware update, there must be something wrong with it, bug fixes, whatever. Mm -hmm. By and large, and, and yes, there are some of those, but by and large, these are feature improvements, enhancements, and additions. And I want to mention three sort of general notes off the top um, mm -hmm. just to address some of the questions I know we've got and we'll get. Mm -hmm. Number one, yes, we are continuing the plaid shirts from last night to, <laughs> to keep some continuity. We don't want to confuse anybody. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> number two, Leica firmware updates are always cumulative. Mm -hmm. So they always include the previous updates in the current update. So you, if you're three versions out of date, you don't have to go one, two, three. Yep. You just put on the latest one and you're good to go. Correct. And the last point was, I can't remember what it was. We have to talk about Colorado. <laughs> oh, we, should we, we, should forget, we actually forgot to talk about that last night. So well, we, we didn't forget talk. to talk about it. We kind of got um, Future We're going to talk about short. It. We got kind of short changed. So. And we should bring Jose on as well. Where's Jose? There's Jose. In the third, hello, everybody. I think the third thing was uh, future products. We don't remember. Oh, wait, no. Well, that was, no. It was something else about firmware. Uh, no, we talked about future products uh, right before, right, right after the power after went the out. After the power went out, we, had, yeah. we showed um, the M12 <laughs> monochrome, <laughs> the CL3. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame that the lights were out because it was really it Man, was it was game changing. A, it was killer. It was, and we were giving them away for free. Totally. It was, totally. It was bananas. Yeah. Um, the email went out. <laughs> so hopefully everyone is, is now tuning in. Um, right. No, there was another thing about the firmware. Man, you know, it's so weird doing this on a Sunday. Yeah. I, I have to say, like, you next feel off, You feel off your game a little bit? A little bit. Well, yeah. I want to thank everyone for joining us again yeah. and also Jose for giving up his Sunday night with us. Um, Happy December. Mother's Day, everybody. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Happy Mother's Yay. Day. Yay. Um, so what was the other thing? It was about the cumulative part and something else. Oh, it doesn't matter. It'll come else. to me. So, so formatting the cards to every camera. Oh yeah, formatting. Yeah, formatting. Yeah. Well, that you can. We're gonna go through all that again. Yeah. yeah. But so, Jose, why don't you come back on just briefly here? Um, uh, so, Josh, Jose, myself, and also Kirsten will all be in Colorado this coming week for the LHSA International Lichen Society Spring Shoot. And we're going to be doing a live and in-person uh, panel discussion, also known as Red Dot Forum Camera Talk Live, not recorded on the internet. It's not streamed. It's not recorded. No. If you want to experience it, you have to be there in person. Except the event is sold out. 
It is? Yes, it's sold out. Really? Yeah. So that you will have to call someone who's there and have them put us on speakerphone. Or maybe <laughs> like have someone stream it on their yeah, phone. Give them any ideas. Something. This is it. This is it. We're, we're putting this a Faraday cage over the, over the right. conference room. Nobody can stream. There'll be jammers, exactly. cell phone jammers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yes, we look forward to seeing everyone who is going to be joining us in Colorado. Very exciting. Um, I'll be there Friday all day. David will be there Friday mm -hmm. and Saturday, I believe, Correct. as well. Yep. And um, Jose as well. So you'll have the chance to ask us questions before the show that day, day after for David. So Yep. And, and uh, just, Kirsten will be there as well. She will. Yeah. And just a little bit of housekeeping as well mm -hmm. before we get into it. Uh, the next episode after we go to Colorado will be our 50th. Yes. And it'll be another Ask Us Anything. That's right. Again, 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 again. Fifth or fifth which means we've done 50 episodes. That's insane. Which is insane. So we are obviously grateful that we are able to keep doing this. So thanks to you guys. That's be June, uh, June 11th, uh, so. early June, something like that. So you got a little bit of a break from us, assuming you're not going to see us in Colorado. If you yeah. are, you have less of a break. And and as always, um, be sure to like and subscribe, click the notification bell so you know when we post new content, like our Ask Us Anything, because I think there's going to be a lot to ask about. I think so too. All right. Um, let's, okay. Let's do it. We're doing this thing. So the way that this uh, sort of format is going to work is just going to be like last night if you did see it. If not, essentially, we are going to cover every step of the process that in mm -hmm. is involved in updating the firmware of the cameras that received updates on Friday and from start to finish. And then we will show what the changes are and how they're used and answer questions about them. So that's right. We did everything M10 related yesterday. We covered that. That was pretty simple. That was just adding mm -hmm. VisaFlex 2 compatibility to the M10 generations of cameras. Oh, that was the last thing I wanted to mention was yeah. firmware updates, even if they seem simple, sometimes have under the hood fixes mm -hmm. or tweaks that like it doesn't publicize. Sure. So it's always good to update the firmware, even if it seems like, oh, I don't even have a piece of Flex 2, why would I update? It also ensures compatibility with the Photos app. Exactly. That's another thing that we kind of tend to forget right. is if you want to use the Wi-Fi and you have the Photos app, Assuming your photos app is up to date, and I think 3.1.2 is the current as of on Friday or Saturday. Double check that. Uh, I think it's 3.1.2. You have to have the latest firmware on your camera so that it can talk to the photos app. So even if you don't think you need whatever that new feature is or don't think you want to do the update, you should, number one, to make sure you're getting any under the hood fixes that like it doesn't specifically state, and two, to ensure compatibility with the Photos app. That's a big one. So the latest version for Photos is 3.1.2. Yeah, is that, okay, so I was right. Yeah, and that you can always check that by- And it came out two days ago. Yes, you can always check that by going into the App Store like David just did, and just looking at the current version. Uh, um, you can show that. Do we have the overhead camera here? Let's see. Will it focus? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There we go. So here, this is the App Store, so you could see that is 3.1.2 updated two days ago. So that is the current version of the Photos app. So definitely, Update that if you do not already have it. Correct. Cool. Okay. All right, so now we should do it. Let's dive in. Anything we have to cover ahead of time now? No. We'll start with the Q2, I think, would be fun. Sure. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, have David kind of, well, let's let's back up. Is that a Q2 mono? This is a Q2 mono. That's worth, that works fine. Because um, of the, that could be the same. You need three things, four things, to do the firmware update. Five things. Five things? Okay, a computer with an internet connection, a card reader, an SD card reader, yes. either built in or separate. Yes. A fully charged battery. Yes. A memory card you can format in your camera, meaning you can wipe everything that's on it completely. So here's what we need so and far. And what's the fifth one? Nothing. And the camera. And the camera. <laughs> and the camera. There itself. it is. Five and that's things. Yeah. So camera, computer. Yes. With internet, card reader. Yes. Formatable card and a fully charged battery. That's important. You want to have a fully charged battery. So okay. So step one, you want to go through that? Yeah, so the very, very first step in the process is I'm going to update right now the Q2 monochrome, okay? And this process will be the same for the Q2 as well. First thing I'm going to do is insert a fully charged battery. Go. Then I'm going to insert my memory card. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to turn it on. Yeah, I can, I can just handhold it for I think so. a close-up camera. There we Move go. Move it that way. Right here. Sorry. Sure. It's like... Uh, you know, everything's backwards. Here we go. Let's get it here. It's like a lay flat, though. And, okay. Jose, can you switch to that one? Perfect. How's that look? Looks great. Good. All right. So I'm going to go to my menu. I'm going to hit menu once, menu twice, menu a third time to get to the main menu. I'm going to scroll down to format. Here we go. Format card. Hold on. There we go. 
crooked. I'm going to say, yes, I want to format the card. And again, this is going to wipe everything that's on the memory card. And this is always the first step in the process of updating firmware. So before I put the firmware on the card, I always format it. And the key thing here is I'm formatting it in the camera that I'm going to update. So if you have an M10, an M10P, a Q2, and an SL2S, you want to make sure you format the memory card in that specific camera first before you initiate the firmware update. So now I've got my camera, I've got fully charged battery, I just formatted my SD card, I'm gonna take the card out, turn the camera off, I'm gonna hand it to David and David will take it from there. I will. Okay. Here it is. Uh, I'm gonna put this in the computer, like so. Okay. Now, Jose, if you could uh, pop over to the computer view. Okay, now, uh, right here, I'm going to go on, uh, as you can see, I've got Red Dot Forum pulled up, and I'm going to find the, the Q2 firmware article. Now, if this isn't just, obviously, this was just published, you know, yesterday. So if you were looking for this somewhere in the future, or there's other news items, because we do update the site a lot, if you just type firmware right here in the search box, you can see it will organize all of the firmware updates. So I'm going to click on the firmware updates for Q2 and Q2 monochrome. And this is obviously the Q2 monochrome. So I'm going to click here to download. And I do want to show, because uh, when we did this last night, I only showed you Google Chrome. I do know a lot of you guys use uh, Safari as well. So I have both windows pulled up. And I'm going to just show downloading the same file what the process looks like on each. So on the Q2 monochrome, I'm going to click the box to download. And if you're on Google Chrome, right here down in the bottom, you will see that it's continuing to download. It has, OK, a few seconds left. It's done. I just click this arrow right next to it and say, show in Finder. And something I want to mention again Tom, tonight that I mentioned last night is you want to make sure the file is fully downloaded before you do anything else with it, before mm -hmm. you, you go to the next step. Some of these files are getting over 100 megabytes now as there's all these new features. And if you don't let it finish and you try to copy it over, you may copy, but the work, the update itself will not work. So just keep yeah. that in mind. Okay. Um, also, just to reiterate, something not to do is you could see here, well, there's the firmware file. Okay, let me double click on it. And you get that error message. There's no application set to open the document. That's the correct behavior. This is not to run on your computer. It is a firmware file that only your camera can read. Now, I am going to... I think you should emphasize that again. That yep. Just because this is one of the most common missteps that we see uh, in the firmware updating process, which is the file you download is not a file that you open. There's no double click. There's no enter. There's no program that you open it in. This is simply to be downloaded, and then you move on to the next step. Correct, correct. OK, sorry, carry on. So I'm just going to quickly move this to the trash just so I can show you in Safari. So here I have the same um, Q2, Q2 Monochrome article in Safari, and I'm going to download Q2 Monochrome here. Now, that looks very different. Obviously, the whole screen just went blank, and a little animation happened. If you look here in the upper right, there's a little download icon with a progress bar, and it's still going. And I'm going to click that, and you see here it says Downloads. And all I have to do is now click that. And it shows me the same view, same file in the same folder, which is my downloads folder. So whether you're using Safari um, or using Google Chrome or Firefox, the process is similar. If you do downloads on those programs, you should just know that they all go to the downloads folder. All right, so now going from here, what do we do now? You'll notice that in my in my Finder window here, I've got a, I'm pointing at the screen, and obviously <laughs> that doesn't work. Uh, right here, you see Leica Q2M. Okay, that's my memory card. And you'll see here it says there's a DCIM folder and a private folder. And inside the DCIM folder, well, there's nothing. Um, these are empty folders that were created from the formatting process. So I'm going to go back to my downloads. And we can do this one of two ways, which is one, the way I like to do it, which is really easy, is I just click, nope. <laughs> We're going to try that again. We click and drag it right onto the memory card and let go. And you'll see here, it's copying it over, and it's done. 
Okay, that's one way to do it. I'm going to remove that real quick and show you the second way, which is I right click or two finger click on the trackpad and I say copy. And then I go over to the memory card and I click paste item. Okay, either of these do exactly the same thing. What you want to make sure though is that this file is living alongside these other folders. If you go to the memory card, what we call the root folder, if you go here and you don't see that firmware file on there, you haven't done it right because it's living in one of those folders and the camera can't see it. So it has to be exposed right at the main directory of the memory card. Um, if you're on a Mac, you definitely need to make sure to eject it, which is this little, you hover over this, the little round circle there is eject. I've now safely ejected it. I have in hand, and we're going to hand this back to Josh. All right. Where is Josh? There is Josh. Josh. So the next thing I'm going to do, here we go, is now I have our memory card, which was formatted, and the firmware file for the Q2 monochrome is on it. I will now insert it into the Q2 monochrome, like so. Here we go. I feel yeah, it, there's like a Zoolander <laughs> reference in my phone. <laughs> it's to make this, the camera. To make this a bit easier, I'm going <laughs> to put the camera on this little tabletop tripod, so bear with me while I attach this not fiddly at all. Not fiddly at all. Tripod plate. Come on. Can't tell if these are decorative items on this table or like, I don't know. It's like mildly decorative. So we'll what do you see. mean decorative items? I don't know. A bunch of random stuff. Don't Here worry about it. it. Okay. Don't worry about I'm it. I'm not worried about it. Here we go. You look a little worried. Oh, uh, super worried. Okay. And there we go. Lens cloth. Clean that screen Clean off. Clean my screen off. So oh, I'm yeah, not yeah, totally yeah. embarrassed about how disgusting this camera is. There you go. Okay. This looks good. Looks great. Let me get it. Nice. The one that's fell in Iceland? <laughs> Say what now? I don't think so. I don't think this is the one that fell in Iceland. Uh, that is. That's mine. Is it? Isn't that this one? Oh, yeah, the yeah, one yeah. with the giant right, uh, right. scrape on the top? Yeah. Guys, this one is mine. That one is nice and fresh. All right. Let's go to the close-up camera and get my focus here. Okay, Jose, here we go. So I've got my Q2 monochrome here, which is slightly crooked. It bothers me. Here we go. This is bothering me, too. I told you. Yeah, it's like decorative. <laughs> hey, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, what yeah. I was talking about. Oh, I don't have enough room. Okay. It's still, it's still a little crooked. Got wait, wait, wait. There yeah, we go. perfect. So nice. Oh, wait, what's this? Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So I've got my YouTube monochrome here. And I'm going to go to menu. I'm going to hit menu again and menu a third time to get to the main menu. I'm going to hit the up arrow to get to the bottom of the menu. And I'm going to go up until I get to camera info. Uh -oh. Oh, sorry. We lost our focus here. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Oh, no. Really, it really, this is the new overhead camera, so bear with me here. Thank you. Just to show you one more time, I was in the main menu and I hit up and I went to, why does it keep doing that, David? I don't know. Mm, it doesn't like you. It doesn't like Every me. time you put your hand in there, it's like. Oh, I see what's happening. So I have to like sneak it in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we go to camera information, which is the third to last item on the second to last page. We go to the right. And we can see there's a line item here for firmware. This Q2 monochrome is currently on 1.1. I'm going to go over here. Again, I'm just using the right arrow. And we're losing our focus again. Just just focus on me and while it's uh, pulsating. This go. reminds me of the early days yeah. with the close-up camera that was always just going in and out. Just yeah. like this. Unfortunately, there's you, we don't have anyone. Why is it just like bouncing around? It's really, it's really having a hard time. I don't know. Mm, this is, I guess it wouldn't be fun okay. if it was easy. Okay. I'm going to go to the right arrow here. Oh, ooh. move the camera. What do you <laughs> just mean? move it to the side. No. What do you mean? Uh, just move it around a little bit. You guys enjoying this? There you go. Okay. Start update. So I went down to start update. I'm going to hit the right arrow. And now it is doing the spinny do here. It says, do you want to upgrade to firmware version 2.0? I do. I'm going to say yes. This is the next thing you're going to see. Now, all like of cameras, or even the older ones, have what are called user profiles. User profiles are banks of settings that you can save. So basically a snapshot of the camera's current, my hands are here, current configuration that you can save. And depending on the camera, you'll have between four and six different user profiles. On most of the cameras, not the M10 generation cameras, but most of the current models, when you update the firmware, it actually resets the camera and wipes all the settings away back to factory defaults. Now, personally, I don't really mind that too much because it kind of gives me a chance to go through one more time, 
see the new settings, make sure I got everything dialed in the way I like it. Um, I also update lots and lots of cameras, so maybe I'm just used to it. But if for your own cameras, if you don't want to have to go through all the settings and set up your camera again after the firmware update resets your camera, having user profiles and then backing them up is the way to ensure you can bring your configuration back. Now, this camera doesn't have any user profiles on it, so it's asking me if I want to save my profiles. In this case, that's moot because I don't have any profiles on the camera. So that's important to understand is if you don't have any saved configured user profiles, this setting, whether you say yes or no, it doesn't make a difference. You have to have user profiles saved in the camera, which you can then export to a memory card, like a little tiny text file. And then when you reset the camera from the firmware update, it will ask you if you want to bring those user profiles in. If you say yes, you bring them in, and then you can bring them up, activate them, and put the camera back to the settings you had before. So there's no way there's no other way to save a, ca a camera configuration unless you have user profiles saved in your camera, which you then export. And this is true with all the cameras. You can have, again, up to four, between four and six different user profiles. We probably should do a whole episode just on user profiles. But until then, sorry about this. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, and so in this case, because this camera does not have any user profiles on it, I'm going to say no. And now we can see the firmware is updating. Ooh. And you want to make sure you don't touch any buttons, take the battery out, take the card out, put it in the oven, none of those things. <laughs> the oven. Yeah, don't do any uh, of those things while this process is happening because you want to. Yeah, yes. Now, I remember, you can come back to us while that's going. I still remember my favorite was, do you remember the camera that said, uh, updating firmware, do not vibrate it? <laughs> was that the M8? Uh, I Maybe. Or was the M9? It something. It wasn't, I think it was the M8. I don't remember. The M8. I yeah. had updated an M8. But it was hilarious. It was like, it would have that message that says, updating firmware, do not vibrate it. And you're like, really? What happens if I like shake it? I'm just looking at the dog is. It was his birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Enzo. Enzo's, birth Enzo's birthday was yesterday. He turned nine years old. We didn't even get to throw him a proper on-camera birthday party. Well, I think he thought it was a party when the lights went out. No, that's was right. like, he surprise! Was <laughs> I don't know why. I agree with Tim, even though you're... Why can't we put the up overhead camera in manual focus? Um, because the different cameras are in different but places. But I'll just move them. I can just be careful about it. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay. Well, if it becomes really, really bad, you get to see David stand on a chair and change the camera setting, so... <laughs> It's like way, way out of reach. Super, super, super fun. Super, okay. super fun. Oh, Jose, come back to the oh, old. Yeah. It um, so we can see the update is now complete. It didn't take too long. Uh, the M10 is what takes a really long time. Now, you'll see it says, please restart the camera. I, I recall seeing some confusion over that terminology. That simply means turn it off and turn it back on again. There's yep. no other no. complicated thing you have to do. So I'm going to turn it off. Turn it on. Turn it on. Before it loses focus. Yay! <laughs> 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 it's like a game. I think we have to do a shot every oh my time. Gosh. Every time the ooh, oh. we, get the little, we get the little dance. I know, but that's fancy. Ooh. I really love these. I'm, mesmer I'm mesmerized. Right they now. have really gone overboard with this these. This is so though. excessive. But and it, it says monochrome. I too, love that. They, hired, I love they probably that. They, somebody got paid <laughs> to do this. To make that <laughs> animation. So now we are at the same screen you would see if you were to reset the camera. So we'll go through. We'll do English. I'm not going to deal with the time and date right now. You'll see it if I hit the center button, it just bounces between these two because it pretty much insists that you do something in this. Um, I can just half press the shutter and just bounce right to the main um, sort I think of shooting you mode. I think you should. But the reality is you actually do want to set the time and date. Yes, um, for sure. I just didn't want to fiddle with it right now. But yes, if you did what I just did without setting the time and date, don't freak out. You can go to the menu and we can go to date and time right here. So you can always set it later. and. You should definitely set it before you start shooting because if you don't, unless the Photos app is going to do it. Are we on daily savings time or off? No, no, it's off, it's, right? Uh, no, it's on, on. Oh, yeah, it's Eastern Daily. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. daylight. Yep. I like month, day, year, March, April, May 8th, 2022. Time is 7.26. I guess, I, am. I guess I'm doing it. <laughs> it's fine. 7.26 p.m. All right, now it is set. So here we go. Now... Um, now we can actually go through some yes. of the changes. I think we should. Um, Let's talk about this first. The first one is a change we saw. Where did we first see that? On the SL2? SL2. Yeah. Which is a new metering mode. If we go to our exposure metering here. Now I'm in the favorites menu, but you could also get to it on the first page of the main menu right here. Or from the quick menu as well. 
or from the quick menu. Show if that I just one, yep. Menu, we can go right, where is metering going? On here, the lower left. Bottom yeah. left, and we can get to it there. No matter how we do it, the new metering mode is called Highlight Weighted Metering, which very simply adjusts the camera's automatically calculated exposure for the brightest areas in your scene. Yep. This is especially handy on the Q2 monochrome. As we know, the monochrome cameras really like when all the highlight detail is captured because they don't save a lot of blown out highlight information. So, David, you've been using this quite a bit, have you not? I have. Yeah, and what do you think of it? I think I'm off screen. Yeah, go, go, go switch over. <laughs> Um, yeah, I use highlight weighted metering on, on the SL2 and SL2S a lot, and it's ironic. Um, again, I should give a shout out to my wonderful group that we had in Patagonia uh, last week. That was a fantastic and fun trip, and landscape, which means contrasty light. So everyone with the SL2s, I was having them put them in highlight weighted metering, which is what I use, mm -hmm. which is everyone was like, wow, this is the best thing since <laughs> highlight weighted metering. I'm yeah. like, I know. Yeah. And they said, hey, when is it going to come out for the Q2? I wish I could set my Q2 monochrome for that. <laughs> I'm like, who knows? Maybe who knows? they'll come out with firmware. Yeah. And then, of course, I come back, and we go. a few days later, I know. new firmware. So, awesome. Yeah. Um, it will make your live view a little bit darker, but that's fine. Because it's simulating what the exposure is going to look like, which you want to know. Well, it will, although with this other edition that they also put in, which is IDR, mm -hmm. Intelligent Dynamic Range, um, that's... We're going to talk about that next. So that was an improvement that they put in um, for, OK, so IDR, Intelligent Dynamic Range. What's a little confusing there is it doesn't magically make the camera have more dynamic range, because that's based on the sensor, and they can't do that. What they can do is widen the dynamic range or the apparent dynamic range for JPEGs hmm. and video, and you're like, that's great, except I'm shooting landscape and I'm using DNG like I'm supposed to. You should be. Um, so how does it help you? How does it help someone like me who doesn't even shoot JPEG? I shoot DNG only. Because just like the film styles, like if you take a color camera and set the film style to monochrome, you're seeing a monochrome live view and you're able to pre-visualize what your post-process result will be in the viewfinder. Similar IDR, allows you to modify the live view image to show more shadow information like you would get when you did shadow recovery in Lightroom. So it's actually kind of cool because now if you combine the highlight weighted metering mm -hmm. with IDR and bring the shadows up to the mm -hmm. maximum level, it's going to be a lot closer to what you're actually intending to get as a final result. So, so it's that, really cool. So I'll show you what that is in the menu. Yeah, please. Should, what does Julie want? Julie, why are you texting Dave? We're doing, we're doing, a, we're doing a thing. We're doing a thing right now, okay? We're, we're busy. <laughs> right, here we go. Jose, come over to this one. All right, so menu, menu, and menu again. And I was already there, but it's on the go. second page. So yeah. just so you guys can see where it is, if we scroll down to the second page, we have IDR, which is currently on auto. I haven't played with this too much yeah. yet. David, can you tell us a little bit about the different settings we're seeing here? Yeah, so set it on high. Okay. Um, well, there's not much that I can show on the live view because it's just yeah. uh, Is it? A picture of my hand. Yeah, no. I'm going to macro mode. Why is everything in black and white? Oh, I think it's broken. Oh, no. There we go. It's fine. <laughs> it's not going to work. So you can see my hand. Yeah, there's not, not, wow. enough, there's not enough to show. Uh, I don't have anything that's like got a lot of dynamic range like on it. <laughs> Turn this on. Why? Just, why would, what are you doing? I don't know. Let's see what happens. Ah, there. There you go. That's okay. perfect. Why is that perfect? Because it's like super, super bright okay. image, right? You can see we, were, we prepared for this. We spent so much time. So there is, whoa. OK, there's a full image, right? <laughs> well, I'm so illuminated now. I love it. But you'll notice that it's not blowing out the highlight, even though, Come on. wow, I really I told you, I am just, about to stand I, up I'm on agreeing with everyone in the comments saying put it on manual. Please. Oh my gosh. Give it I, a break. This is a, new, this is a new addition to the studio for us. The problem is, we're it's still, seeing this. We're still, we we're still working out the, working out the bugs. Clearly. Um, Clearly. This is, OK, we're wasting time. So anyway. <laughs> the point is, we can go back to us, Jose. The IDR is designed to affect either in-camera JPEGs that you're shooting, also the live view, so you can simulate a little more of like an HDR type of image. Yes. I can't say that I use it that much personally. Well, we're going to go into here. Um, this, is, this is the other part. But, okay, but because anyway, I'm not spending a lot of time looking yeah, yeah. at the back of my camera, but not, that notwithstanding. Um, so let, let's get into this setting, which is the uh, extent... Another thing they've added is extended image properties. Again, relating only to JPEGs and video, 
and live view preview, what, regardless if you're shooting DNG only or not. So let's get into that. Um, and there, you can see here, I've just got some screenshots, but I'll have Josh actually do it in uh, in real life. Yeah, so if we go to, there we go, our menu, and we go to the main menu. And again, if you say, oh, I don't see it, it's because you're in the favorites menu, which David and I both usually just disable. disable yeah. Anyway, hit menu again, and we go to our JPEG settings, which is the first line item on the second page. And we go to customize image properties. That is a long description. And here we can change our different parameters for, again, the live view and also the JPEGs if you were shooting mm -hmm. DNG plus JPEG or JPEG only, which you shouldn't do. Um, you're, unfortunately, you're not really going to be able to see um, any of the changes. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> it's doing it table. But basically, well, this is. I don't know if that's going to make a difference. Well, let's see if I can. Um, and I'm just what I'm doing is just using the arrow keys here to bounce between the various um, setting. Maybe contrast. Yeah. Now darker. Okay. So negative values. There you go. Now you can see that, right? Yeah. Negative values are Waste. always going to be darker, and positive values are always going to be lighter. So you can see that. Okay. Yeah, okay. There we go. You got sort it. Of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They can sort perfect. of see what's going on here. Let's see. Uh, sharpness. I don't think sharpness is going to be. No. See it. No. Anyway, so effectively, you are using uh, these settings to fine tune the live view image as well as your uh, out of camera JPEGs if you're shooting it. Correct. To sum up, I don't want to get Correct. too. Uh, but, in this, yeah. but bear in mind, yes. it's not impacting your raw files Correct. at all. Correct. That not is important to mention. Them. This has nothing to do with your raw files. This is, if you're shooting DNG only, this is simply an aid to allow you to more accurately. I don't even know how, how Correct. I would describe it. <laughs> Correct. Correct. See, Correct. See what you're trying to see later on. Okay. So let's see what else. Um, I'm trying to go in order. Okay. So the, got... next, the, next the next big one is going to be additional video formats. Okay. Um, so, and I can show that here. So previously there was pretty limited uh, in terms of what video you could capture. Now I have a handy dandy chart here. If you want to see every single, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. I'll try to zoom in a little bit. I won't zoom in. I will zoom in. There we go. Um, so this shows in both. And now it gives you the choice of MOV or or MP4. Before you didn't have that choice. It was only MP4. So now you can shoot in very high quality, 400 megabits per second, uh, all I or intra I uh, video, which is great, up to Cine 4K at 30 frames per second or regular 4K up to 30 frames per second. Um, and there's also, if you go into the MP4, there's even high speed all the way up to 180 frames per second in full HD. So that is very, very impressive that there is all these new video formats. And because they are such high quality, it's the same encoding that's in the SL2 and the SL2S, uh, except this, the, with the only difference being that the Q2, Q2 monochrome records in H.264 encoding, not H.265 encoding. But that's not really a quality thing. That's just a space efficiency thing. So H.265 is just higher compression than H.264. But in terms of actual image quality coming off the sensor, you're going to have the same uh, data rate and image quality off the Q2 and Q2 monochrome as you would off an SL2, which is super impressive if you want to use this as a, uh, as a B camera or doing some kind of environmental video where you don't have uh, audio because there is no there's no HDMI out and there's no audio input jack into the Q2 or Q2 monochrome. So really, uh, you would need an external recorder and then use say Scratch Sync just based on the internal audio recording. Or if you're taking nature or travel type of video vlog stuff and you're going to overlay music anyway, it doesn't really matter. So I, I think this is kind of an underrated thing with the with the Q2 mono, Q2 and Q2 monochrome having such high quality video um, at your fingertips available. So well said. You should at least play with it. Um, and then the other ones. The other changes are not stuff I'd really would show here. No. Um, you can, David. You can. Sorry, interrupt. Just continue yeah, yeah. kind of go through um, what we're seeing. For sure. So. Um, Data management has been improved. What that means is a lot of people, especially with these really large memory cards now, 256, 512 gigabytes, uh, there was rolling over and, and using the same image numbers again. 
So instead of going to 999, they go now to 9,999 before rolling over back to 0001, which is good. And the folder numbers now go to 999. So um, just a little update in terms of data management. And then the other uh, smaller items here, I guess this is not a small one, but you can also, from here on out, you can update firmware via the Photos app, which we'll talk about in our Photos app. Episode? Yeah, we are um, just you know. Yeah, go talk about this. We're we are going to do an episode of the show dedicated to the Photos app, which is why we haven't talked about how to update the firmware via the Photos app on this episode. Uh, we also like using the SD card method because it works on all the cameras. So mm -hmm. whether the camera has Bluetooth or not, or Wi-Fi or not, that method is is tried and true. So anyway, in case people are asking, like, well, I did it with the, through the Photos app. That's awesome. We love that. But that's going to be saved for the Photos app episode. Yeah, carry on. Yep. Um, the uh, there's also again part of photos improved geotagging and improved Bluetooth optimization to work with the Photos app because there's no GPS in the Q2 or Q2 monochrome. You can use your GPS that comes standard in all your mobile devices, and uh, using the Bluetooth low energy or LE connection, you can remain connection, uh, maintain a connection there, and it will geotag all your photos. And uh, that's basically it in terms of the Q2 and Q2 monochrome updates. Mm -hmm. um, so so some, some big ones. Uh, some big I mean, ones. Highlight weighted metering is, is really the big one. Yeah. Um, but obviously, it's going to depend. If you're a video shooter, the new video settings are huge. If you are a GPS geotagging fanatic, that's huge. So there's no reason not to update, especially because we literally just showed you how to do it. And again, this is exactly the same process you would use on the Q2. No different. Settings are the same. The changes are the same. It's all the same. So what you saw us do on the Q2 monochrome, exactly the same process on the regular Q2 or any special edition Q2 if you had one. OK. Well, I feel like we've covered that pretty thoroughly. Let's come back to us and see if there's uh, me, any questions. Well, let me. I saw a couple of questions from the last show, which I'm happy to answer kind of now as we're in between. Sure. Um, the someone said, Glenn asks, does, it, does using the VisaFlex 2 with the M10R also cause a loss in resolution like with the M10? Yes, the M10R is imaging sensor is higher resolution than the M10, but the output of the VisaFlex si uh, signal from LiveView is exactly the same as the M10. So there's no difference in the viewfinder, or excuse me, in the VisaFlex 2, no difference between the M10 and the M10R. It's exactly the same. Good, good. Um, what else? Hold on, you're moving your hand in there. Go for it. I guess I could let Jose ask those <laughs> Jose, he's been getting it off way too easy. Jose, while we're in between cameras, ask us some questions that are relevant. Uh, let's see. Yeah, somebody also asked, is the VisaFlex support the only thing in the update for the M10 series? Um, that we know of. Well, I'm assuming better compatibility with the newest version of the Photos app. I haven't mm -hmm. tested that yet. Uh, but they haven't said if there's any other changes, but it doesn't mean there aren't. It just means they haven't said it. So, again, like, always update. Always, always update. Just, just do it. Please. Yeah. Do it for Josh. Do it for do it for Enzo. Do it for Enzo. He, he, for needs, Enzo. he needs it. Enzo needs current firmware. Anything else, Jose? Uh, a couple of people have experienced maybe some some errors or some. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Every time there's a huge update, you know, one out of a thousand, there may be a bug here and there. Sometimes it's just one random configuration of settings. In that case, uh, since you can't redo an update, I would always reset. Uh, well, I see Mark is asking uh, when will it come out for the M10 monochrome. It is out. And yeah, yeah. For the firmware, right? I think he was asking about the Q2 monochrome. Um, the highlight weighted metering. The oh. highlight metering, yeah. I don't uh, know if they'll do that for the M's because they only would get that using live view. Advanced metering. And yeah. and that may be a little bit tricky for people to be like reconcile that. It's not going to work all the time. The M11 has it too. M11 has it because yeah. it's live view only. Yep. Um, there's no meter on the shutter, but I don't know if we'll see it on the M10 monochrome at any point. Yeah. I also saw there was a question, not from today's chat, I think from yesterday. Um, about, or may, it may have been related to the Q2 about why there's no perspective control mm. like we have in the M10R and M10P. Mm -hmm. Just not yet. That doesn't mean that in the future no. it couldn't also be. Again, we don't know what like is going to do next. Like we say in every show, we didn't know the firmware update was coming until like Thursday. Maybe. We scrambled like last minute crazy <laughs> um, to try to get a show put together because yeah. it was such a big deal. Um, but you know, we don't know what's coming. And I've seen. Some questions in the in this chat on the last chat mm -hmm. about firmware updates for older models. 
it's pretty rare. At a certain point, they do stop updating. Um, every now and then when a new lens comes out, they may update it to add that data into the camera's lens profiles. Yeah. But, you know, I would always defer to Leica and Leica's website. Well, not right now, but <laughs> get it up and running properly um, to check to see what the current version is of your older digital camera. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a question there. Can I reverse an update? Since after the latest M11 update, I wasn't no. able to change the resolution. It was stuck at 60 megapixels. No, I, th I think like a customer care probably could, but yeah. as a user... Um, they would have to that. give you custom firmware. Like they would have to email you something yeah. that you could but you can reach, I mean, reach out to Leica if you have an issue yeah. uh, and, and just say, hey, I'm, here's what's happening. Send them a screenshot or you know a phone picture of the screen so they know what's going on. And then I'm sure, no, they'll help you. That's, that's what they're there for, so... Yeah. And I think uh, the bugs have been with the SL2. So we're going to go over that now. So let's see if. Yeah, we'll go over the SL2. Um, I just, again, want to mention this. I mentioned it yesterday. The um, If you do have user profiles or you do have settings on your camera, or I'd say even if you don't have user profile set up and you have a bunch of settings that you do use, I'd recommend assigning them to a user profile and saving them on a separate SD card. We should probably discuss that. Uh, that way, yeah. all of the settings that you had in the camera will transfer back yeah, over I, I don't, after the update. We, we, we can talk about user profiles, but I think we need to make sure we get through yeah, for sure. firmware. We probably should do an episode about user profiles or, or incorporate that into something. I think we should. I just know it's already 743 and we're like, <laughs> so I have to do the SL2. Um, yeah, yeah. So let's get an un unupdated camera, which I think... Is an SL2 S? Is an SL2. We should do the SL2S. You think? Yeah, for sure, because then I can show this also. Okay. We'll do the SL2S. So while Josh is doing that, I'm going to just say, um, so the firmware files for the SL2 and the SL2S are different, just like they are for oh, the so is this your camera? Yeah. So you're okay with it being totally reset? Yeah, just don't give it to David, please. <laughs> <laughs> he said it, not me. Wow. So this is Jose, Jose's personal SL2S. Yeah. That's how so you know he's the real deal right don't, there. Don't does, he look, does he look nervous? I will try not to I drop it whilst I... He looks a little nervous. Gingerly right attached. Right Jose, I think you've got a little, like, right here. This, this tripod. Wipe, to it. wipe the sweat off your brow. It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. I'll take good care of it. Okay. I promise. Um, so the firmware updates are 90-something percent the same. All the same uh, features and additions and optimizations between the SL2 and the SL2S, with one notable exception. And I think we just have to address it right now, which is the SL2... And the reason we're updating an SL2S and not an SL2 is the SL2S adds uh, raw video recording capability when using an external recording device like this Atomos uh, Ninja 5. So that is really cool. We'll talk about that um, a little bit uh, when we actually get it connected. So I have updated the firmware because these also have firmware that's updatable. I updated the firmware in this, in this Ninja 5 with fully charged battery, um, storage ready to go. And I think there's a US or a HDMI cable around here somewhere, which we will um, which we'll find and connect. Mm -hmm. And that enables you to record 12-bit 444 raw recording video to uh, to the Atomos. Uh, ProRes RAW for the Atomos, Ninja 5 and Ninja 5 Plus, and the uh, Blackmagic Video Assist 12G can record in Blackmagic RAW. So, uh, which is like B-RAW or whatever they call it. So they are slightly different based on if you're using the Atomos ecosystem or the Blackmagic ecosystem, but they're both raw video. So similar to what you would get with DNG, you actually get with video files. All right. Now, we just finished showing you how to do firmware on the Q2 and Q2 monochrome. We are now going to switch over to the SL2 and the SL2S. Mm -hmm. Again, the process of updating uh, SL2 and SL2S is the same. We're going to show you the SL2S because that has all the features the SL2 got plus the raw video, which Dave is going to show. So um, just to start again from scratch, you're going to need your camera. You're going to need a computer with an internet connection, an SD card reader, fully charged battery, and a memory card that you can format, meaning you can wipe it completely of whatever's on it. So if you've got a card that you want to do firmware on, Make sure it doesn't have your, you know, Iceland photos that you haven't backed up yet because you have to wipe that card off um, before, you know about you those? <laughs> before you do the firmware update. So the first thing we're going to do is I have my SL2S here is I have a fully charged battery in the camera, I think. And um, Do you have an SD card I could use? Should you, can uh, I use that one? Let's use it. Let's reformat this one. Okay. 
So I'm going to take my card. I'm going to pop it into my SL2S. That is Jose's SL2S. You can come to the close-up. I think we have focus for now. I'm going to keep my hand here. Uh, okay, so we're going to go menu, menu, and I'm going to go to... Make sure to take all the embarrassing photos off. Format card, <laughs> format card one, format card one, yes. Yes. Oh. Uh, we lost it again. <laughs> it's killing me right now. Like, this is basically the same, almost the same position as the... Um, beep. That's the Q2. Okay, there we go. We got it. Uh, I am going to change it to manual right, focus. Once, once, right, once, I'm going through the, once, once I'm going through the changes, <laughs> um, then, then you can do it. Because um, we can come, right, come back to you now anyway. All right, so I've got SL2S, a freshly formatted SD card, a fully charged battery. I'm now going to give David the SD card, and he's going to... Carry on the next step. Okay. okay, so I inserted the memory card into my computer. Mm -hmm. We can come back to the computer view here. So again, David's laptop has a built-in SD card reader. Uh, they don't yeah. all have that. So if you don't, you will need a separate one. Yep. All right, so I found this, again, through Red Dot Forum. But if you didn't see it and you were starting from scratch, just type firmware. And you can see here we've got... SL2 and SL2S. So I'm going to download the SL2S firmware, which is version 3. And you can see it's right there. I'm going to show in Finder. Here we are. And did you notice that it wasn't quite finished, like Josh was saying? So we want to make sure it's done. And here I'm going to copy it. And we've got a memory card, card called SL2S. I'm going to paste it right there. And again, if you're watching this part of the video without having seen what we just did, the firmware file is not made to be open. So there's right. no double clicking. I, I, no, I will throw that no, again. None of, yeah, this is normal. The file does not have to be opened. You're downloading it. You're copying it onto your memory card. And that is it for the and, and you'll side. And you'll not as well, you'll notice this little thumbnail view. If you have your if you have your thumbnails enabled, it'll say exec, and it looks kind of like hacky, <laughs> hacky looking thing. It's the matrix, right? It there. is the matrix. So we don't want to we don't want to engage in the matrix. Yeah. Uh, what we're going to do is just eject that card and hand it back to Josh. All right. So now I've got my SL2S here, which is currently out of focus. Um, so don't go to it yet. <laughs> you, put, yeah, just move it. I'll put the card in. Where am I moving? No, that's good now. But I'll put the card in. All right, Jose, you can go to this camera. I'm going to turn it oh. on. We're going to go menu, menu. I'm going to hit up to get to the bottom of the menu because I know that the out of focus. All right. I'm going to have David. Um, I'm going to change it. David don't, is going don't. to get on his chair. <laughs> Do not go um, to this is a, This is a very dangerous situation don't we pre have. Don't precarious. I have it right now. Can you even see the top of that thing? No. going to fall on top of all yeah. the cameras. <laughs> if the camera falls on my head, at least it's recorded. So I'll have a witness to the trauma. That is... Well, actually, how about this? What? Why don't we switch to the computer view and you can talk about the... Well, I have to, I want to show them the updates. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Is this worth the trouble? I feel, uh, like it's... I feel like it is. I feel like it's not. I feel like it is. I feel like it's not. Maybe. All so right. why do you sit down? Anyway, <laughs> so we've got our um, firmware on our SD card. We've put it into the SL2S. We've navigated our way to the camera information section of the menu, which again is menu, menu... And it is, I just went from the top, I went up, up, up. There it is, camera information and focus. Go to the right. Camera firmware version is 2.0, which is not current. Go to the right again. I can see again, we're on 2.0. And I wish this was just stay. And boy. Wow, it really is. Okay. Are you sure it's not uh, worth it? Because okay. I'm thinking it's worth well, it. I, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. All right, start update. And there we go. Let's see. Update the firmware version 3.0. The answer is yes. Save profiles and SD card. I don't have any user profiles. Again, if you want to save your camera's current bank of settings, current configuration, you first need to make user profiles, save them in the camera, and then you can export them onto an SD card to later import when the update process is done. If you don't have user profiles and you update your firmware, even if you click yes on this setting, you're still going to have a camera that's reset to factory defaults because you didn't have any user profiles. So just be aware that updating the firmware is going to reset the camera. So I'm going to say no because I don't have any profiles on the camera anyway. Sorry, Jose. And now the update uh, wah, wah. is starting, updating the firmware 3.0. Okay, now... Now what? We go to this camera. If we go to the screen and you, I can fix that.
Or you, you would like to. Oh, that's Would you like to discuss some of these? Um, well, I'd rather show it. Yeah, you can show it. Well, I can ramble Let, on. Let's about see that. if there's uh... anything that I can talk about before. Uh... Yeah, for sure. No, not really. No, this is a big really. update. I, I, I actually had to print out the. I had to print out the thing. <laughs> I remember to talk about everything. Look at this. Look how many things there are on here. There's a lot. Oh, I mean, this is um, really indicative of Leica's commitment to the product line in general, but really the SL system. You can go, David. It's yeah. fine. If you think about the SL Type 601, which came before the SL2, how many major features we got in firmware, the one I can think of that really is most uh, significant is the addition of an electronic shutter, which was a game-changing update if you're looking for like silent shooting or super fast sync speeds. I wish you could see there's David literally just nope. standing right next to me. My shot? Okay. Great. This is, this is great. Um, anyway, and the reason... I'm just filling a little bit of time here, so forgive the rambling, but the reason that this video and this episode was important to us is because I cannot tell you how many times I get cameras on trade-in, digital like cameras on trade-in that have old firmware, sometimes really old firmware. And when you don't update your firmware, especially when you go lengthy stretches without doing it, you're missing out on so many great features and you're missing out on little bug fixes and performance improvements that Leica is doing for free. So hopefully, this episode, which will later, of course, live on the channel as a recorded video, can serve as a reference for anyone who has one of these cameras to help update your firmware. And obviously, we'll have to do the other cameras at some point because we risk covering a few. But this is, you know, kind of the big ones. Um, M11 is really the only one we're missing. That camera is brand new, so we'll have lots of big updates coming. I'm sure that we can talk about. So I'm not too stressed out about that. We're good, by the way. Did you do it already? Yeah, did it. Huzzah! Huzzah! Right, go back to the close-up. Let's see if it actually works. What if I go like this? Wow. Your hands are not in focus, but Sweet. the camera is. So this is still going. So you can see this takes longer than the Q2 does. I would say the M10 takes the longest. Uh, the SL2, SL2S takes, takes a the really second long longest. Time, yeah. And the Q2 is the fastest. And it makes sense when you think about how complicated the cameras are. Um, I will say also, if you use a slow memory card, it also takes longer. So I always recommend, especially on the SL2 or the SL2S, a UHS-2 high-speed card for the update. Um, I'm hoping that actually like if something bad happens, so we can we can troubleshoot, I hope, I troubleshoot it. I hope not. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna find out. All right. Second. Well, let's go back so we can answer some questions while we're waiting because yeah. it is still gonna be a few minutes. Yeah, so. I'll, I'll let you know when it's done. Don't worry. Yeah. What do we got uh, while this is going, Jose? What kind of burning questions should we answer? Uh, let me see. Mm. This is our screen grab for the next episode. Mm -hmm. What else going like is this? Adobe, Adobe RGB available for the SO2 JPEG in the update? I don't believe so. I don't know why you'd want Adobe RGB on a JPEG. But... Right. There's no real reason for that. If if you're concerned with wider color gamut, you should be shooting in RAW. Because RAW has no color engine. gamut. There you go. Correct. So a lot of people are like, how come this? It doesn't matter. Just like we talked about the film styles, um, the extended image properties affecting the preview image, but not the raw image. It's the same kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I I mean, that used to be the case on a lot of cameras where they had the choice of sRGB or Adobe RGB. Uh, also, I think there was a couple cameras in there that also had the, what was the CIE? ECI? E, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that, that was the S, the S cameras. The S that cameras thing. had that. Yeah. Oh, and it's done. It's done. So let's go back to the now not pulsating autofocus um, close-up camera. Hooray. So now you can see the update is successful. I'm just going to get it. Perfect position. There we go. So please restart the camera. Again, that simply means power cycling it, turning it off, turning it on. So we're gonna Now has this has this lens been updated? There is no lens. Uh oh. Did that on purpose. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> I anytime that there's an, a firmware update for the SL2, almost always or, or often there are firmware updates for some or all of the SL lenses. Again, not all, not always all, sometimes some, sometimes all. So the way that I like to do it is I first like to update the camera with no lens attached just so I can make sure that I can restart it and that everything is is nice and stable with the camera. Then I'll do the lenses. So what I'm going to show you now is there's no lens on here. You can't see that, but tr trust me. <laughs> there's no lens on here. And I've just updated the firmware. I'm going to restart the camera and just make sure that the firmware installed correctly and everything is good before we do a lens. And then we'll show the features. Let's do it. I'm going to turn it off. Turn it back on. I want to see the animation. Show You're me the animation. You're going to get it. Don't worry. Show it to me. It's going to come. Give it a second. Oh, it's broken. Ooh, pretty. It's mesmerizing. <laughs> <laughs> All 
I think the mo the Q2 monochrome was actually it was, a much it was actually in yeah. black and white. Did you and notice that? It was. Yeah. It was a cooler animation. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're up. In All terms right. So of we're language. choosing English. Ah, this is when you could different. pair the camera to the Photos app, and that will also set the time and date automatically. That's super cool. That'll be for the Photos app episode. I'm going to pretend that. It's also worth mentioning. Yes. Uh, let's mention this. You really need to delete whatever cameras you have set up in the Photos app. You're hitting buttons over there, David. I did hit a button. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I have to shut down the whole studio again. <laughs> right, anyway. Um, uh, make sure if you have a camera that's paired with the Photos app, delete the camera from the Photos app and then reset it up after the update. Um, that's very important. Otherwise, it doesn't work properly. Okay, so Sorry. I have that in the instructions online, but you do want to make sure that, um, and, and that doesn't matter. Oh, I updated the Photos app and I updated the camera and they were previously set up. It doesn't matter. Delete it, reload it. It yeah. doesn't take very long. Yeah. Uh, they've really optimized that connection process, but you want to do that fresh anytime you update the camera. And that that plays true for the SL2 or the Q2 uh, or the M10. Any like a camera, you just need to reset them up when you update them. PSA is over. Let's get back to... Here we go. Uh, all right, so I'm going to hit skip. And this is, so you can see it says via smart, uh, smartphone. This is so that the, if you connect to uh, the Photos app, it will update or it will sync the time and date of the smartphone with the app. In this case, I'm going to turn that off and just manually do the time and date. Minus five, daily savings time is on. The date is May 8th. The time is 7.58. Perfect. That is done. I'm going to half press my shutter. You can see it's black because I have no lens. Let's go and make sure the update was successful. 3.0, look at that. So now what I'm gonna do is turn the camera off and pop on a lens. If I can do it. Hopefully that small one. Backwards. Yes, I'm gonna grab a 35 app OSL and I'm gonna have to move it. I don't wanna drop it. There we go. Okay. So now I just popped on a 35 app OSL. So let's see if it gets an update. And the, ca the camera was off when I put the lens on. That's important. Turn it on. Oh, look at that. There we go. So before anything happened, the camera scans the lens. It detects that the lens firmware is out of date because the, the lens firmware for the SL lenses is stored in the camera's firmware. There's not a separate firmware file for the SL lenses. So if the camera's firmware is as up to date as it can be, you attach a lens, it scans the lens, it says, hmm, that lens is out of date. It's going to automatically update it. Now, the reason this is really important is because if you do an update on your SL2 or your SL2S, and you have four or five, six, even two or three SL lenses, even one, you want to make sure that you go one at a time and attach the lenses and let them update at home before you're out somewhere, as David and I oh have both God. done. <laughs> you go, you're at an amazing vista. you got to quickly swap on your other lens because it's, it's the scene suits it. You go to take a picture and it says updating. You're like, no, and then the bald we, we eagles. Act, yeah, we actually um, we covered that in our in our what not to do episode. Yes, we did. We Correct. did yeah. because and and what did we say? It was like Bigfoot and you know, <laughs> whatever ridiculous. and Elvis and yeah. Stupid, yes. You're gonna you're gonna miss whatever that great opportunity is yeah. while waiting because that happened pretty quickly as we're rambling on. But when you're waiting for the perfect photo and the light is fleeting, yeah. it, it's an eternity. Yeah. So, and there is no way to cancel um, it. Come back to the close-up or the overhead, please. So here we go. It's asking us one more time to restart the camera. Now, the firmware version tends to be different for each lens. There's going to be some similarities. But don't feel like if all your lenses aren't version whatever, the same, that something's wrong. Again, a lot of times the zooms will have unique versions. And, yeah. and again, not every lens has an update. Now, I don't know which ones do and which ones don't because I haven't sat down and like attached them all yet. And Leica doesn't publish that because, you know, they hate us. There's also <laughs> some additional compatibility for um, L-mount alliance lenses, which David and I have not explored yet because we don't have any of them, um, like the non-Leica L-mount lenses. So I would say if anyone out there is watching the show, has updated their SL2 or SL2S and has either Sigma or Panasonic L-mount lenses, if there's been any changes to functionality, let us know in the chat, because we would like sure. to know um, that, because we're just not sure. OK. So you want to go through uh, and, yes. and talk about some of these changes. Why is this battery like halfway dead already? I just noticed this. Uh, it's, up it's hungry. Updating things. So what should we do first? Should we do the thumb wheel, or the wheel settings? Or no, that's not the most exciting uh, one. What, what is really exciting? Uh, 
I mean, a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot there's of things. There's a lot, yeah. Um, mm, oh, you know what? I I think yeah. we know what we talk about, what? and it's like kind of glossed over in the release notes. And you and I uh, saw it. It was pretty dramatic. Which was the function button. Ah, okay. So here we go. Before so, this, this is all like I said. Yeah. This line: additional functions for direct access to yeah to FN they were, button. They were pretty vague about that. So. <laughs> What Leica has done is increase the number of options you have for customizing any of the function buttons from 31 to 55. They really went all out. So you have 55 <laughs> different possible um, functions for each function button on the camera. Now, I don't know what the math is, but that's a lot of combinations when you factor in user profiles. And we oh talked about this before, before the show. Yeah. This additional functionality, these changes really Double down the need for a very dialed in set of user profiles. Oops, turning off. Um, if we go to our user profiles here, you have six. Let's bring on, up the uh, close up. Oops, sorry. Yeah. You have six user profiles available to you. So you have six profiles one, two, three, four, five, six custom function buttons. Wow. With 55 possibilities for each button. Uh... So you have many, many, many different scenarios you can pre program. And here's the thing. On the SL601 and some of the older models, it was really, really important that you set one of the function buttons to bring up user profiles in every single user profile so that you could quickly bounce between them. That got a little bit annoying, and if you forgot one, forget it. What's cool about the new menu system of the Leica models is that user profiles are available in the quick access menu. So when I hit menu and I see this little dude right here, or I'm gendering him, little person <laughs> right here, and I tap on this person. I can see I can bounce between my user profiles. In this case, I don't have any because I haven't set any up. But now I don't need to have one of my function buttons dedicated to user profiles in every user profile. Instead, I can just use my quick access button here, which is really, really, really convenient and one of the more understated um, benefits of this menu system. So are you trying to do the math? I don't Why? know. I, I don't know. Uh, I, we need someone better than us to yes. do this. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so if I press and hold, for example, this, this FN button here, I can be uh, scrolling through this massive list of all the possible things that that button could do. Now, of course, what you set it to is going to depend on what you like to do. Everyone's configurations are going to be different. I haven't really spent the time with the new firmware yet to decide what I want to do because it's only been a day. Um, one of the things I really like is this new feature, which I think we can just segue into now, sure. which is in the past, it was a little bit tedious to um, bring your focus point, your autofocus point back to the center of the frame. Uh, if it was like off in a corner somewhere or you're switching between vertical and horizontal or, or, or your whatever. Nose. Or your nose, yeah. So one of the features like I added is the ability to quickly toggle in between the center of the frame for your focus point and wherever it was last. So that function is buried in here somewhere. Here we go. It's called toggle focus point. The only way to do that is through a function button. So if you are looking for that feature, it has to be assigned to one of the camera's function buttons. I'm going to assign it to the FN button here. I'm going to change my focus mode to well, we should field. Yeah, explain that it only works with certain Right, it's modes. not going to work in multi-field because there isn't a single focus point. You need to be in one of the modes that has a single focus point. In this case, I'm going to show you in field, which is where you get this little, um, oops, <laughs> this little box here. Can they see that? Let's see. Oh, that's easier to see. Uh, I need a lens cap or something. Oh, no, dark. No, use the battery again. No, no, oh, I, need, I need to like make oh, it dark. Oh, uh, yeah. There. No. No. <laughs> Put the cap on. Uh, I don't have a cap. We don't, you don't use lens caps. Oh, wait. This is not a 67. That's not a 67. Um, wow. Unexpected, uh, so good unexpected right <laughs> problems. Oh, nope. It, whatever it is. Yeah, it's here, just, just manually expose. Other way. We're, we're, here we go. I'm trying to make the screen black so you can see. So if I were to relocate my autofocus point, let's say to the top left, and I wanted to bring it back to the center, I have now I have three ways to do that. The traditional method is either to just use the joystick to move it back, or I, if I have the touchscreen enabled, and only if I have the touchscreen enabled, I can double tap. To, come on, to bring it back to the center. I'll show that again. It's a little or, bit, as you can you see, can it's not tap in the middle. It's not super elegant. Um, just one more time. It's up here. Double tap. Again, that's only if you have touchscreen enabled, which I usually disable. 
Yeah. It drives me nuts. And then you could also do, if it's up here, let's go back. You could also just kind well, of... Well, you, you have to be spot on again. Right. That's if you have touch, uh, touch screen enabled. And But now, if I move the focus point up here, I can hit Fn Boom. to toggle between the center and where it was before. So if I want to have center for, let's say, my horizontal shooting and one of my points, like maybe over here for vertical shooting, I can do that. I can quickly bounce between them. For me, this is just nice because I, I tend to put the focus point in like really random spots. And then when I'm doing the next set of images or whatever, I want to bounce it right back to the center. This is really, really convenient. I don't think I would put that on my FN button here. I'd probably put it on one of the front buttons on the camera. But that is most likely something that I will have um, since you currently don't have a way to lock that point in the center without locking the entire joystick. And that's a whole other topic. Which, by the way, I would love to have that. Yeah, so, whatever. Okay. Somebody did the math for us? Well, yeah, but that's so. So Mark did the math. Um, I mean, six to the fifty-fifth is one thing, but there's actually six assignable user profiles with that right. many combinations. Yeah. So it's a lot more than three and a half million. It's a lot. It's more than I would say almost all of us need. Maybe not David. David needs a lot. I need of all settings. of those. So anyway, that was one of the big changes that I like. Well, two of them. One is the addition of lots of new um, functions and for the function buttons and the toggle um, back and forth to the center. What's next? OK. So uh, the wheels? Yeah, let's do the wheels. OK, so. Wheels on the camera go round no, and round. Don't, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and the show's over. Why didn't the, the power go out now? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Anyway. <laughs> Um, one of the weird changes that they made, I don't know, this, it doesn't make sense to me, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say who, it who because it's judge? so absurd. Yeah. So yes, somebody somewhere wants this and it's neither of us. I'm just going to say that right now. I, I would really appreciate it. if someone actually is like, that's the feature I wanted. I want you to put that in the chat because <laughs> I want to know that someone exists. Uh, for don't, this. don't be such a hater. All right. So I'm what, such, what I'm such a hater. So now, in addition to the default, let's say, of, of aperture and shutter speed or uh, exposure compensation if you're in aperture priority mode or focus magnification if you're in manual focus, is now direct access to either the rear thumb dial or the front dial, which is also the top dial, uh, for ISO. So you can now do ISO control without going into an ISO menu and completely change it on a per picture basis as you go for whatever reason you might have for doing so. I shall show you how that is done. Overhead. All right, so we go menu, 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 menu. Here we go. So many menus. Customize control. We go to our wheel assignment, and you have different options, whether you have an autofocus lens or a manual focus lens attached. I have an autofocus lens attached. That's what I will show. Go over here. Now you have different configurations for the top dial on the camera and the rear thumb dial. These two here, oh, you can see, right, these two. Uh, depending on which um, shooting mode you're in, program, aperture priority, shutter priority, or manual. So for le example, let's say for manual, no, that's gonna be crazy. Let's say for, for some reason in aperture priority mode, you wanted the rear dial here to be your ISO. So you just turn, once you are over that part of the menu, meaning it's lined up and or highlighted in red, you simply turn the dial in question and the functionality will then change. You can see I'm turning the rear dial and the different options that are available to me for the functionality of that rear dial in aperture priority mode are cycled through. So if I were to set this to ISO and I half press, you can now see that my ISO is, well, I'm in program mode, sorry. <laughs> Here we go. That my ISO is changing simply by turning the thumb dial. So again, this is only for aperture priority mode. And you can see down here that my ISO is changing. This to me is very dangerous. Oh my gosh, Because yes. if you accidentally change your ISO in the middle to of shooting. 100,000. Yeah, and... I feel like it would be a disaster. So I don't really know. Honestly, the only use case that I could see is when I'm doing testing in the studio yeah. and I have to do ISO <laughs> testing where I'm I know, manually right? going through each yeah, ISO. Yeah, yeah. I use it for that. Sure, sure. That would be super yeah. convenient. Okay, yeah. Other than that, I don't know, but it, you know, maybe somebody out there needs this feature. I don't know. Anybody in the chat have any uh, insight? Mm -hmm. Actually, derby? easy ISO control is really useful for roller derby. Okay. okay. I think if I needed to have to be changing the ISO that much, I would just dial in a very specific configuration for the auto ISO. Right, because so by default, I'm just going to reach over yeah. to this camera. So by default, if you got here, Jose, 
uh, by default, this top button here, this function button, brings up ISO control. And you can either use the scroll wheel, you can use the joystick, or you can touch it. And that's always accessible. I leave that. That is actually one of the custom functions that I don't further customize. Yeah. I just leave it be, and that's how I get access to ISO. Why I would need one less click, I don't know. But look, it's there. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. No big deal. But it is there. Um, the other one that is really cool is a feature we had on the original SL, the SL Type 601, that they took away on the SL2, and it just took them two years to bring it back, <laughs> which is depth of field preview. And also, for some reason, some type of weird shutter speed preview that is there it is, yep. beyond my understanding. So yep. if we want to access that, that also has to be on a function button. So I'm going to hit FN, press and hold FN, and I can see just under the one new feature of toggle focus point is my other new feature of exposure slash depth of field simulation. You should also point out, yes, because if you scroll up, which I will, I will do, yep. It's a little confusing with all of the options now. I believe there is another one that is exposure simulation or something. Yeah. Uh, no, that's image stabilization. Oh, wait, here. Exposure, exposure preview. preview. Yeah. So exposure preview that you see here is not the same thing as the new feature, which is totally separated from it. Well, where did it go? Which is that exposure depth yeah. of field simulation? It's important. It's, to, it's important to understand that there's two types of settings the function button can do. One is what I call direct access, meaning you click it and it brings you to, or you click it and it makes a change, like with that toggle focus point. The other is menu access, uh, so you click it and it brings you to a line item in the menu faster. So depending on what you set it up as, is going to determine how that button behaves. In the case of exposure slash depth of field simulation, if I were to tap on that. Oh, you probably turn the dial all the way down. Um, I can hit my function button, and you'll see a little green eyeball next to the aperture. Or hit the it, green F. And yeah. I hit it again, and I see a little green eyeball and green S over the shutter speed. So if you hit it again, it clears away. So when you see the green F and green eyeball here, it is stopping down the lens's aperture in real time to whatever you've set the aperture to. This is a super old school feature that was on depth of field film preview. cameras, this yeah. depth of field preview. If you hit it again, you're still getting depth of field preview, and you're also getting shutter speed preview. Well, we can kind of demonstrate that. So yeah. if you slow it, choose a much slower shutter speed. I got to go to manual mode. Yeah, yeah go to manual. There we go. And it's theoretic, there you go. See? Can you keep? We got to get. You're not, yeah, see how it's like all weird and it's all laggy. Yeah, that's because it's simulating the effect of a half second shutter exactly. speed. Exactly. Exactly. Now go to a faster shutter speed if yeah. you can. Oh, wait, I'm going the other way. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah? Yep. Good? Mm -hmm. right. uh, you need ISO now. There, look. And now you can see that it's much smoother because it's going to actually stop the motion. Yeah. There so go. I know that was like a horrible preview. Super, 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 super nice and very easy. No, but basically... The, Change the screen. This, it's all white. This, <laughs> is, this is useful for depth of field preview. That's really, so if you're in a shooting environment and you want to see what the depth of field is going to look like, honestly, I'd probably just shoot the picture and look at it, but hey. No, it's, I, think it's, I think it's useful. Yeah. Um, I also think that the exposure preview can be useful in, in certain scenarios of, um, it's so weird to see the camera. Oh, uh, it's, it's ex I think it would be useful in scenarios, say, if you have moving water and you're trying to choose the correct shutter speed, although I'm kind of with Josh, which is the old school way is just if you don't know if a third of a second or a half a second or one second looks better for a waterfall, you just shoot each one and you scroll through them because it's sometimes easier to do that. Yeah. But you may find that the uh, shutter speed preview is, is useful for you to show if it's going to stop motion or be blurry. But again, that's either, I feel, common photographic sense or just shoot two variants and look at them. Yeah. There you go. What's next? We got... Let's see what else. Oh, I mean, we've got a lot of stuff, but what are the big ones? Um, yeah, I'm looking through. Yeah, setting. Toggle focus point we did. Exposure to everyone. Oh, the eye detection thing. Is that really, that's not really going to work. No, but we should talk about it. Can you show it on the... Do you, you don't have any graphics here? I don't right? really have any graphics. So, But I'm going to bring it up. Okay. Somewhere. Uh, uh, there's basically um, uh, an eye detection for... The face and body detection. They call it, well, now they changed it. They the renamed name. it. Yeah, right. So let me go to that. So while well, he finds that. So it's so it was face and body detection on the 
current version or the previous version. I've got it here. Isaiah. And go they have it. renamed it to Eye, Face, and Body. You yeah, see. you can go to, well, go, go to David while we... Yeah, you'll see here. This eye, eye, Face, and Body. Um, nope. Uh, yeah, kind of. Almost. Almost. Um, yeah, so Eye, Face, and Body detection has been uh, changed to uh, to expand upon the existing functionality. You can come to both of us, maybe. How's that? There we go. Um, and we're still here. So, I, and I'm going to use this as an example. So, if you were looking through the the SL2 right now, and you had it to eye, face, and body, it would put a little box around my head, and it would put a box around Josh's head, and on those boxes would be little arrows on both of them. And using the rear joystick, you can go left and right, and it'll toggle between the preference of, oh, I want you, I want the camera to track me or I want the camera to track Josh in this scenario. And it will work with more than two. I mean, you can have a group of six people and it'll put boxes on everybody. That was in the pre-existing firmware. You could do that prior to this firmware update. What's changed now, in addition to the boxes around the faces, is now there's also little boxes for the eyes inside the head boxes. So it's kind of like little robot looking things hanging around right now. And what you can do is both toggle between the faces, like before, but you can also toggle between the eyes, which is really helpful, not necessarily in a group scenario, but in a uh, in a portrait setting. Let's mm -hmm. say you're shooting super shallow depth of field, uh, you're using a 90 Sumicron, you know, Apple Sumicron at F2 for minimum distance, and you don't have enough depth of field to carry both eyes but the camera doesn't necessarily know which eye you want to focus on. Mm. For creative purposes, you might want the rear eye or you might want the front eye. So you can tell the camera which one to track, and then as you shoot, that eye will continue to be in focus. I, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, we could probably show the like the tagging. We, we, didn't, we didn't figure out if it goes into Lightroom yet, do we? We were going to do that, and I guess the power went out. Well, okay. I think it does. It's, it's are, in the M11, too. One, one of the things you can do uh, with the new firmware is um, starring photos yeah. during playback. Do we have a, a card with... I can just take a picture right here. Now. No, you have images on here. Okay. Are they going to work? I mean, I hope. Let's find out. The anticipation is killing me. Let's see. Yeah, they work. Don't delete. Play. You go gonna up, here. down. Nope, 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 nope. You're deleting. Up, down. Did it star? Oh, it's like it's thinking. I don't think it likes this card. The fact that much. it's an SL2 card. Oh, is that what's happening? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like it's it's very mad at me. Let me just take a picture with. Okay. okay we're very prepared. Uh, I'm gonna give you this. Take back. a picture of the memory card. I'm give you. Oh, I need the memory card in the camera. <laughs> we're doing great. You know, kind of. It's a Sunday. Okay. Cut us some slack. We're doing our. We're doing. I'd say we're doing our best, but. Uh, that's we're debatable. doing like <laughs> I'd say like seventy percent. Okay, yeah. there we go. Now I took an image. Did you? Okay. Can you go to the close up? Okay. So, if you, I took a picture of our super awesome um, table. <laughs> this is an award winning. So, because it's so good, I want to star it so I can um, make sure it's the best. Yeah, but and simply just move the joystick up. You'll see a little star come up here, and then the joystick down will unstar. Or you can click the function button too. This one? Yep. No, that clears out the. Nope. Oh, what are you talking about? No, it's only the joystick. Don't listen to him. It was the function button. No. no, no. We're still figuring this out ourselves. So <laughs> you're on this journey with us, you see, together. What's next? Uh, we've got exposure. We'll do video last because that is sure. the most convoluted for me to explain because that's your thing. Direct setting, we got that. We got in better geotagging. So a lot of the stuff that the Q2 got with the um, Photos app, the SL2 and SL2S got as well. Um, 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 um. I think that's kind of it for still stuff, right? Kind of. I mean, there is also we got that one power saving. Ah, okay, so I can show that. Yep. So if we go to the menu here, and we go to camera settings, and we go to power saving, there is now an off setting for displays and autofocus. Auto off, meaning um, how long of period of inactivity with the camera sitting around but being on will it turn off the screens and deactivate the autofocus? So if you are doing, I don't know what scenario this would be. Uh, video for video, like, like okay. here where you let's say you you set up your camera for a zoom camera. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and it's like ours, hooked up HDMI to your computer, and you're on a Zoom call that's three hours long because, sorry, you are, um, or, and you get up during a break and you go get some coffee, you can come back and the camera won't focus on you because the autofocus went to sleep. So if you turn this off, when you, once you sit back down, it'll focus on you again. Well, like, while I'm rambling on, import that card and see if it translates into Lightroom. I can't import it on this. What on the big one? I maybe. Just, just try it. Maybe. We're going to find out. I want to know. And, someone, and Luis just asked, and I think we all we should find out. Um, OK, so let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. We got the ISO, which I don't understand. Uh, the joystick tagging, fine. The focus toggle, which is cool. Eye detection, which is cool. Uh, improved geotagging. Again, this is talking about the Photos app. So make sure you've got 3.1.2 for the Photos app. Um, they did, again, talk about additional support for the L-Mount Alliance lenses. We just don't know what that is because we haven't, we don't have any Sigma or Panasonic lenses. Um, and the additional, now we have 55 different options for the function button, deactivating the power saving, bug fixes, the ex exposure preview, which is cool, or excuse me, depth of field preview. And I think that's pretty much all the still image changes, unless I missed anything. Um, what do we see, David? Just uh, I'm just importing it. So David's importing a, a photo that I starred in um, playback. It does come through Lightroom. It gives it one star. I'm pointing like you could see. So yes, when you star an image on playback in the SL2 or the SL2S using the feature in this new firmware, yeah, one star. that star translates to a one star rating in Lightroom. So that actually could make your sorting and organizing easier. quite a bit easier. That is super, super cool. I'm glad we confirmed that. Before we dive into the video functionality, uh, Jose, any questions that we need to answer that are burning and relevant? Um, we have somebody that said that uh, on the Q2, the new high quality video format offers 422 at 10 bit, but when they did a test, the, the file shows as 8 bit. Um, uh, in MP4, it's 8 bit. In MOV, it should be 10 bit. Um, but again, it's pretty new. We haven't tested all that. Yeah, we obviously, this program came out Friday. Well, we, we still have a lot to kind of experiment with. Um, what, one of the things we're actually excited about doing this show is getting some feedback from people that have been trying the new firmware mm -hmm. as well, which we've been getting, which is awesome. A lot of um, bugs, it seems like. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. We just updated this camera um, in real time, and it's been fine so far. I don't see any smoke curling out of it. Uh, what else, Jose? Does the eye detection autofocus track with autofocus continuous? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's the that's the, the beauty of it, is it will track the eye. You can use IA. I mean, the best combination I've found is using IAF, intelligent autofocus, combined with face and body detection. Yeah. OK. Will shutter speed preview work for star trailing? I, yeah, I doubt it, because you're talking about star yeah, trails are going to be in the 15, 20 yeah. minute range. Uh, I don't think it's going to preview that long. Yeah. You're talking about a simulation between, say, uh, you know, a sixtieth of a second and an eighth of a second. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be using it for multi-second exposures. Yeah. Okay. What else? Uh, mm, uh, just a few comments, but okay. Not really, that many questions. Well, that's fine. So we can we can carry on. Um, you know, there's a lot of video functionality that has been changed, and that is primarily in the SL2S. Um, which has really always been the more video-centric of the SL2 and SL2. It has. There's there certain features that made it into both. For instance, the when you talk about video, so the IS... This, this one's a little bit of a... What are the computer housing? Yeah, this one's a little bit of a... I'm not quite sure why they did this, but if you see here, ISO settings and finer increments of half or third EV. And you can see the listing here that this is clearly not jumping by whole stops. And... There's, oops, sorry. And there's the fine print in video mode. So you have to be in video mode to get third stop ISO settings. I mean, we'll, look, we call it like we see it. I can't for the life of me understand why this would be brought to the video side and not to the photo side at the same time. Um, a lot of us users have been asking for third stops on the SL2 for quite some time. And this is like, I don't get it. But if you're shooting video, third stops is nice to have. And there you go. Um, the other thing along the same lines, and you can see here, is aperture settings in T-stops. When you're in cine mode, again, that's even a smaller subset than the video crew. Now, 
looking to cine, which is measured in t-stops, shutter angles in ASA rather than f-stops, um, shutter speed, and ISO, just more for the uh, to go with cine cameras. And I think that leads us to, that does, that leads us to the raw video output. So we can just quickly show that on the uh, on the back of the camera. Can we get the, here we go. Oh, before we do that, yeah. as I'm unrelated, but I have to give a, we're talking about SL2S. Um, and one of the things I, we really don't do enough on this show is like give any shout outs to people that whose pictures that we like. Um, so super quickly, I have to give a shout out to my little friend, Eli, who has been um, borrowing, AKA swiping his dad's SL2S and doing awesome automotive photography with it. And I've been trying to help him uh, help him out and uh, he's been doing great work. So if you are on Instagram, you should follow him. Jose, give me the close up camera. Oh, there we go. His account is, he only has a, let's see, does it work? Driven Medias on Instagram. He's 15 years old. He's killing it right now. So I got to give him a shout out for doing good work. So Driven Media is on Instagram, SL2S. We should like a kickstart for him to get some lenses because I don't know what he's got right now. So anyway, <laughs> good job, Eli. Keep up the good work. Um, now back to the topic at hand, which is raw video. So we go menu. You, gotta, you can also go back just Oops. to show the other things. Yes. Um, so to get into video mode, you can either push the... Oh, I see. You're right. Yeah, you can either at the top of that screen, you can either go to video. Oop. That's one way to do it. Or you can go back to photo, and you can swipe left and right on the screen. Yeah, look at that. And you can also configure um, the top button here to switch between photo and video. That's one of the um, holdovers from the SL601 that yeah. screwed everybody up because exactly. if you weren't paying attention, you would go back and forth between it too much. Um, but you can also swipe. Yeah, we did that. You no, you can do it yeah. not even in the... Exactly, you, you can don't do it right be, here. You don't have to be in the quick menu. You can do it... Yes, unfortunately so. Uh, you a lot see, of people... I'm literally just swiping I, eh, from the side. It's I a feel bit like fiddly. this actually catches up a lot of people. Yeah. So it would be nice to disable video completely, but maybe a future firmware update. Yeah, maybe. So let's go into video mode. Yep. And since David is a video expert, I will have him direct me as to what he would like me to do. So Well, first, you can show the ISO just by tapping on ISO here. Okay. And you can see that this is now indeed in third stops. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, I know. And I, I mean, you can just pretend. It's like it's, forbidden fruit that we don't know. have. <laughs> pretend it's photo mode and just like relish this. But unfortunately, it's not for us. Yeah. Okay. Maybe for now. I mean, look. Look how far we've come. For sure. So maybe if we yell at Leica enough, they'll do it. All right. What's next? Leica. What else would I show? Okay. Now go into the menu. Okay. And go to video settings. Here we go or actually video format, sorry, yep. video format. And you'll see here, we've got a new option, MOV, uh, MP4, and now we've got raw. A little dirty. Yep, <laughs> via HDMI, which is very cool. And yeah. if you select that, it's gonna yeah. yell at you. <laughs> that's right, where's our cable? Uh, that's a great question. We had an HDMI cable. We did. I think, you threw it, I think you threw it at me. I probably threw it at you in a fit of rage when the power went out. Is this? That looks like an HDMI it cable. It looks like an HDMI cable, okay. so there you go. So we'll do a little bit of, oop, is that out? Ah, oh, there we go. Now I'm also realizing that this may or may not work. Okay. Hey, look at that. Hey, you can cut to the big shot. Well, we can close, close up, right? No, no, just the. Okay. So that is, ooh, that's a live view. Hey, look at that. Hey, don't show them that. Okay. <laughs> it's like the wizard. No, 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 Clearly, it's communicating here. And uh, let's see if we can uh, set that to the okay. raw raw recording now. Which one would so you go like? back? Oop. Get your head out of the shot. There you oh, go. I'm sorry. I'm, like <laughs> trying to see, I'm trying to see the settings at the same time. All right, go there. Uh, hold on. Let me get the camera straight. There we go. So let's do, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, sure. OK. And uh, da, 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 da. OK, so here, just show them this now. Um, Move the camera. It's not going to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, it won't be in focus. It. I, got it. I got it. I got it. Delicate operation here. Okay, so this is the first time we're seeing this, and you can see that it says uh, something ProRes raw, something else. You you know, be aware. And let's say okay. Got it. Oh, dude. Hey, look at that. Oh, what is that? There's a QR code. I can't read that. What does it say? Oh, you 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 didn't pay enough money apparently. <laughs> This is this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Oh my gosh! Are you are you like 
more what? More money? Oh, because you you have to activate ProRes Raw. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. This shows you what happened when we do a Sunday night show where we're not prepared. But what this also is is a sign that we should never talk about video ever again. No, that's not it. <laughs> come back. Come back to us. Come back to us. Okay. Why don't you just to talk about it a little bit? So with so with this is and and actually, the the twist here is actually I knew that was going to happen. But there was no way to activate that screen until we updated this camera, and we didn't want to update this camera until we were on air. <laughs> this is our life. So oh, there was no boy. way for me to actually connect to this. Well, here's what I would wrong. propose: is when we do our ask us anything, yes, I will just mention that we should because I'll have you do the what, what do they call it in video games? There's like a term for that, like having to pay. Not for whatever it is. Cheat code? Uh, no, or like to pay money like in game to get like more stuff. Oh, I don't play video in app purchases, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, I'll make sure that we have this updated because I do think we should show this. Sure. Um, that's a month from now, so you know, hang in there. But yeah. So, bottom line, if you have the and, and this is kind of goes back to the what not to do. Yeah. Don't not check your gear before you need to use it. If you're going to a yeah. pro video shoot yeah. and you're like. I updated sure. everything, I'm good to go. Yeah. And you get on set and it's like, please enter the license code for ProRes <laughs> Raw. You're like, yeah, yeah. the what now? Right, so you're gonna need a computer, you're gonna need to scan this with the QR code and whatever yeah. and set up an account and pay money and all those things to upgrade to be able to use that special format. Um, I, I think it's $99 uh, because I actually looked this up before. But I think it's fun that we're able to show you yeah this is exactly this is what, what david's talking about is why you do this kind of stuff ahead of time. now for us it's a little different because we're demonstrating something that's right in, I, in I, act, I acted surprised yeah. but i'm not surprised but again this is one of the many reasons just like that lens from our updating thing just do it do it at home yes before you get out and shoot because that looks really silly that you can't record i mean you could record you could just record regular prores yeah but the prores raw you need an additional license for that um, I'm not sure because I don't have a Black Magic video assist how it is with Black Magic Raw if they give it to you or if you have to license it as well. But either way, um, I think it's free. Some things are free. <laughs> well, firmware is free. This is not free. For, just imagine like if Leica did that, like you like you installed the like, memory card with the new firmware and it was like, please swipe credit card. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like where do I put it? Uh, oh, uh, I don't know if you mentioned it. Yeah. Speaking of SL2, just yes. again um, because for instance, this is my SL2. And you'll notice I have uh, two memory card mm. slots populated mm -hmm. because I'm mm -hmm. actually using dual memory cards. Uh, when you do upgrade firmware, you want to make sure to remove all the memory cards yes. before putting in your firmware update card. And you want to make sure the update card is in slot one. Exactly. Yeah, so only one card in the camera during updating, and that card should be in slot one. That's a good point. Yeah, I remembered that from earlier, but I wanted to reiterate that point yes. while yes. we're still yes. on SL2. Yes. So... Um, uh, let's talk just a little bit about that function in in technical hypothetical terms, yes. which is it's not perfect. It's not exactly how I would like it to be, but I guess that's like everything these days. Yeah. So uh, you do get ProRes RAW. It is 12 bit, 444 recording rather than 422 10 bit. Uh, like the normal HDMI ProRes. As you saw the in the selections, you can go up to 60 frames per second. You want to pull that back up while you're talking? Sure. I'm going to go here. Yep, okay. there you go. Just so you can reference that. Oops, really poorly positioned. That's a good little... Oh, I like the composition there. That's nice. Okay. Yeah, being artsy. Um, so you can see you can go all the way to uh, 60 frames per second, uh, which is which is very cool for that. But do be aware, and you can come back. Come back to us, I think. To us. Do be aware that you're not able to use full frame. You can only use APS-C mode, also known as Super 35. Wop wop. Um, I mean, it's good and it's bad. That kind of brings me back to the SL601 days where to get 4K video, you had to shoot in APS or Super 35 mode. Leica's reasoning at that time was twofold. One, a lot of people are using, for Pro, are using PL mount lenses, which are generally Super 35 frame. So if you have cine lenses, and that's like the Sumalux Cs, the Sumacron Cs, those well, there's are... There's a lot more full-frame options now. There are a lot more options than now than there then. were then. Yeah. But traditionally, those PL mount lenses are super 35 frame. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, and, and it kind of comes to a quality perspective, and I think I understand it from a, a data processing standpoint, which is on a 24 megapixel sensor, like the SL2S, like the SL601, when you went to the Super 35 or APS-C crop, 
it was 8.2 megapixels or exactly Cine 4K, one-to-one mm -hmm. -one with no pixel resampling. And a lot of people actually find that to be sharper because you're not up it or not up it, I'm sorry, you're not down resing it or oversampling the image. You're getting a per pixel, very crisp result. From an image processing perspective, they don't have to do the oversampling and the downsizing in camera before exporting the much higher data rate 444 12-bit files. Mm -hmm. I think that's why it's happening. I I'm taking a, a educated guess here. Whether or not in the future they add it for full frame, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times with these really, really big changes, they're progressive. So mm -hmm. they'll add something like this raw video and it'll be a little bit compromised and they'll continue to expand on the functionality. So, you know, Leica's commitment to video on the camera side is pretty new. Yeah, for sure. So there's a lot of things that are happening um, still. So. I don't we'll know. See. We'll, we'll see, see where it goes. Yeah. If we and, ever do a video episode. And I know the question is going to be, what about the SL2? What if I want to shoot ProRes RAW video on the SL2? You cannot. Currently. Currently. And it might be, again, it might be a processor limitation mm -hmm. uh, or internal processing limitation because with the 47 megapixel, even if you went to APS-C size, you're still having oversampling and downresing off that to get to 4K. So it may not be technically possible. Yeah. That might be the reason why it's not available. And um, we'll see, you know, we've got, we'll again, the firmware came out on a Friday and we just had this, this chance to play with it. And we haven't really been able to engage the folks at Leica yeah. in any meaningful way about the changes either. So more to come, I think for sure, in terms of what we're gonna see. More to come. More to come. Yeah. Um, and uh, I guess we didn't touch on this, but similar to the Q2 improvements, there's improved geotagging. I mentioned it. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, with the Photos app. Is the SL2S the best camera for video that Leica makes? Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, between the fact that you can shoot raw, but even that aside, the better low-light performance. Or, I mean, the live stream is shot on SL2Ss. There you go. So, yeah, this is an SL2S that you're looking at us on, um, and we're shooting in L-Log in 10-bit, 422 over HDMI, and applying the, the Leica LUT, I think the natural LUT, which is what you're looking at here and there's no other video processing going on. It just looks this good. And um, this is 1600 ISO, and it looks like 200 ISO. It's amazing. So even, and, and you can go back and watch our SL2S episode that we did, where I showed ISO testing uh, both full frame as well as APS-C mode on a color checker going all the way up to 50,000 ISO. Mm -hmm. And there's almost no perceivable difference in video mm -hmm. between all those, which was amazing that it retains color and all that. Yeah. It's it's a really, 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 really good video camera, which is why we have three of them in the studio. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, so hopefully that answers the question. I think, but I can comment yes. that our overhead camera, the experiment, you should not use face and body detection for a camera <laughs> because it's looking for biometrics. Yeah. It's looking for bodies. Is that what you were using? I was. Well, of course, never mind. Don't even, I should have just had a playback image of a person. <laughs> that would have been, I would have thought that. <laughs> or like, put down a picture of Jose and just stuck it on here um, until we were, no, it's fine. So, some of the overarching themes I just want to touch on very yeah. quickly here is number one, firmware updates are a critical part of ensuring your digital camera, digital Leica camera, has the latest features, the latest fixes, the best performance, the best compatibility with the Photos app. We understand it can be a little intimidating to do the firmware. Hopefully, we walk you through start to finish. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really important to us that the people we engage are getting the most from their cameras. So if you have questions or concerns about the updating process, just reach out to us, Jose, Adam, anyone on the team, Kirsten, Peter, we can all help you. Um, I realize, of course, there are lots of other digital cameras like it makes that we didn't cover in this show. David, um, we have a lot of content on Red Dot Forum. Just, from... search, just search firmware on reddotforum.com. Exactly, exactly. And you'll see firmware articles for every single camera going back years. Uh, so if you wanted to see what all the updates were yeah. through that time period, you yeah. could. Uh, in more recent years, we have been uploading them and hosting them to our own Red Dot Forum FTP server, which is where the files live now. And that was good thinking because when Leica ripped apart their website and took all those files yeah. down, we still have a, a lot, lot of those. Yeah, a lot of older cameras aren't available anymore. Before 
Oh, I have a lot of those files, but I need to reach out to like and find out what their game plan is for that before we just start hosting stuff. Right. So it's it's on our list. But you can always reach out to us, um, you know, via email if you have a question about a specific um, current version for an older model because I have a folder with all of them uh, mm-hmm. floating around. So uh, hopefully you can refer to uh, both this episode and most importantly the last quasi episode from last night, which covers the M10 generation, with the exception of the M10D. We did not show yeah. how to do that. Mostly for time constraints and the power weren't going out. There is very detailed instructions on how yes. to update it on Red Dot Forms. That's, that's right. So yeah. it's not like we forgot about it. We just didn't have one to demonstrate. But if you go into the article that David just wrote, mm-hmm. there is a breakdown carefully about how to update your M10D. Step by step by step by step. For the three people that are watching the show that have one, <laughs> if you have questions, just reach out to us. Um, they're just incredibly rare. They um, are. Jose, uh, any last uh, minute? I, 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 we've done almost two hours, and we were supposed to only do about 90 minutes. So... <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, no, you cannot downgrade firmware. I'm just seeing that question that we answered that earlier. Um, yeah, Will, you came a bit late, but we're going to talk about the Photos app stuff yeah, in a separate yeah, show. Yeah. Well, we just like doing the SD card method because it works on all the cameras very reliably. It does. Yeah. But it we does. will do a whole Photos app episode at some point uh, once we get a few other things tweaked. And I think it's going to be really cool to show both um, connection or connecting, troubleshooting, and then also the features you get from the yeah, app, definitely. which are cool. Uh, if you have questions, also be sure to leave a comment uh, after the video goes yes. in archive mode, and you know we'll do our best to attack those as Ooh, well. This is a great question. I'm sorry What's to interrupt that? you. Does a new SL2 huh. SL2S come with a new firmware? No. And even if you buy the camera tomorrow, what matters is when the camera's internal circuitry and, and boards are manufactured. And yep. that happens months prior, and they're made out of fab yeah. and then shipped to Germany. Well, they fla- and they flash the chips. Exactly. Yeah. So if you buy a new camera for the next probably a couple of months, um, any of the cameras we talked about in the last two shows, you will want to update it before you put it into use, for sure. Yes. And generally, they come with dead batteries, so you get it, you charge the battery, Format a card and then follow the instructions. Exactly. That's a great question. That is a good question. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Jose, did we miss anything? No, it was mostly some comments. I mean, okay. a few questions about other topics. But well, well, we have asked us anything um, in a month. In a month. Yeah. So get your questions ready because you can ask us anything. It doesn't mean we'll answer them, but I mean, you can ask us whatever you want. I know with those episodes, are always a bit of a and yes, free for all. We, we love it. Though. We, we, love we it. do love those. Yeah, uh, keeps us on our toes because we really answer everything, and you can ask us anything. Although, don't ask us about. Don't ask us what, when the M12 is coming out no, because don't ask it's us right here. No, um, wait. Oh, you're not supposed to have that. Here. <laughs> We're super, super excited to see everyone in Colorado next week who's so, going to be uh, cool. coming out there. Um, it's going to be an awesome time. The LHSA is a fantastic organization. Did, did we mention open bar? Oh, there's an open bar. There is. Not for me because I had to drive back to Denver uh, that night. But <laughs> for everyone else, you can all get, you can all do a shot every time we say it depends. You can actually do that now. <laughs> oh boy! A live um, Red Dot Forum camera talk drinking game. And if you're going to be there, um, and you have anything super cool that you oh, want to, yeah, definitely bring it by. Bring it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, because the and we're going to be talking about new and old mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. working together, right? What's the exact? Yes, the theme of, of our in-person, not stream, not recorded, super, super secret access VIP event is how Leica's current product portfolio and past product portfolio mix, play together, pay homage to each other. So we're going to bring some cool vintage stuff. But if you've got vintage bodies, lenses, and accessories, things you're using now, things that you really like, bring it. Mm-hmm. Because we love that kind of stuff, and I'll have you throw it to me, uh, you know, in, from the crowd onto the stage so I can show it. Uh, it's going to be, you need to have a runner, like, getting stuff. Um, uh, that's what Kirsten's for. <laughs> so we're super, super excited for that. And if you can't be there, um, certainly catch us back on the show June 11th, I believe. Which I think is so. Saturday. I think so. Um, you want to sign us off? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that people want a video show. Yeah, we'll do that, and then we'll do the Arlen show right after. Oh, yeah. gosh. You're really <laughs> getting into trouble. Twist the knife. Twist yeah. the knife. It'll happen, I promise. We just need to double up our video stuff because all of our stuff David would show wow. is in use. Oh, my God. In the studio. Oh, my God. So it's like, uh, we're working on it. We're working well, on yeah. it. Yeah, it's on the list. Videos is very dependent on what you're shooting, just like photo. So there's not like a, somebody's asking about like how to get started, but it's. Yeah. It's kind of uh, like photo. Like, what are you shooting? Yeah. 
We'll we'll cover it one day. When I say we, I mean David because I don't know too much about video, but that's okay. <laughs> I can help. Yay! You. Yeah, Jose can help. Jose will actually. You I know maybe what? I'll produce the show. Yeah, we'll switch. And Jose will sit here. That right. actually will probably be because be because Jose does shoot a lot of. There's video. only one question, Jose. Do you have a plaid shirt? I do. Okay, perfect. That is, that is, I can't stress how important that is. That if you want to be in the hot seat here, you have to wear a plaid. Otherwise, the seats have like little ejection That's things. Right. They shoot you right shoot, out to the, yeah. the drop seat. All right, sign us off please, All right. before we get Thank crazy. you guys so much. Um, again, we are sorry for the unforeseen, you know, lightning storm outside that happened last night. Uh, and I, I heard it coming and I probably shouldn't have said anything or I should have like knocked the table. But yeah, the, uh, the block went out of power. And um, yeah, anyway, you came back, you saw us, we finished it out. So if you're looking for the M10 and wonder why we didn't talk about M10, look at the uh, previous episode that we did last night and I'll modify it to put links to that show in this description mm -hmm. and links to this show in that description so everybody can find everybody else. Uh, we've renamed them also like part one and part two so you can find it. We will do also our bestest to timestamp these so you can find precisely the camera and the firmware features you're looking for um, and where we talk about that. Uh, as always, please give us a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell so you know when we post new content like this and other exciting things. And be sure to check out red.forum.com for the latest Leica news, reviews, technical articles, firmware details and more and uh big thanks to josh thanks to jose especially for coming in on a sunday yes. again to do this <laughs> yeah, our saturday night and sunday night in the studio yes all right full weekend super fun happy mother's day to those who celebrated and have moms um we all have moms right I in some well, fashion, out there, right? Unless you're a robot. Unless there's a well, okay, yeah. fine. So, you got so me. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, and uh, apologies to them for watching us and not paying attention to them, unless you're a mom and watching us. And great, good Rock for out. you. Sweet. All right. Um, anyway, thanks a lot. Enjoy whatever is left of your weekend, and uh, we will see you, some of you in Colorado and others, back here in June. Thanks a lot, and have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, guys.